Hello, hello, my name is Taylor and I'm a financial coach and I'm going to help you set up your categories in Monarch Money. Uh, as a financial coach, I am seeing clients coming in now with created Monarch Money accounts, which is super awesome. Most of my clients have been introduced to Monarch through me, um, but now thanks to this YouTube channel, I'm getting clients that are coming in through Monarch and other budgeting apps that are trying to transition into Monarch. And I really wanna do this episode on categories because I'm seeing a lot of things that people are doing that are making their lives just a lot harder than they need to be. The goal of a budgeting app is not to spend hours and hours inside your budgeting app, it's to help you make informed, fast decisions that become habits and second nature and your categories are going to be the things that allow you to do that uh, and so I just want to dive into what why we do categories what 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 is the purpose of the categories that we create in budgeting apps now your categories are going to be completely customized to you but I am going to give you a framework of what I have found that works really well with my clients uh, when we set up their budget but the reason why we categorize and have categories are four kind of key things. One is track payments of necessary bills. Make sure your bills are getting paid on time. So that's why we have categories like rent, insurance, uh, utilities. We want to see that those payments have been made, nothing's been missed. Um, and you know that happens. So it's really good for a budgeting app to make sure that you no know, those payments do not get missed. The other reason is to monitor habits. Uh, this is to pay attention to things that you may be doing that you like, you know, that you want to be spending money on of, or things that you don't want to be spending money on. For example, if you have an addiction to, uh, you know, sodas and you're getting a soda at the gas station or if you're in Utah, so delicious or whatever, um, you might have a category specifically for soda. Because maybe if you're trying to quit, quit that, maybe you're trying to uh, gamify that process. Well, this month I only spent $40 on soda. Let's see if I can get that down to 35 and then 30. And then slowly you're cutting out soda from your, from your lifestyle. Those are reasons why we want to track habits. Um, not necessary if you don't care. Um, if you don't care about that habit, if you like that habit, don't need to track it. There's no reason to have a coffee, um, coffee budget if it's not a habit you are trying to track. Or an alcohol or soda, whatever it is for you. You're also um, having, you'll also create a category for anything you want to monitor trends. So if you're actually going to get data, so both of those things are you're actually going to get enough data to make decisions about this thing. Meaning like you don't want to be tracking or having a category, um, a category for something that is completely meaningless to you that you don't care whether or not it goes up or down, whether you're not making decisions based off of this, it is just what it is. Um, and you're not trying to track a bill, then you don't need a category for it. So I like to monitor trends of food budgets. I really like to see what months I'm going out to eat more versus going to the grocery store more um, and see if I can see a trend throughout the year. Um, you know, I pay attention to uh, the, my, my, the trends of traveling. How much am I traveling year over year and how much am I spending? Those are trends that I do want to see and get value out of. But if you don't, you don't have to have a category for it. So it's really if you're going to get some, some kind of information that is valuable to you, you can, you can track it. Um, the other thing is to spend money guilt slash worry free. Uh, if you have a category set up, the goal for creating a budget for that category is so you can spend it without feeling guilty, without feeling worried that you're doing the wrong thing. This can be stuff like just fun stuff, um, entertainment, uh, games, or coffee, or whatever it is that you want. And maybe you just like every time you normally spend money on it, you're like, oh, I don't know if I have the funds for it. I should be going towards my goal. I should be doing this instead. I should, should, should. Let's create a category for it so that if you do have money for it, if you can, then you can spend it guilt-free. So those are kind of the key reasons to have categories. Now, you do not have to have very many categories. There are people who have three categories, one for bills, one for their savings, and one for their variable expenses. There's three numbers they're tracking. That's it. They don't care where the money is going because they know that their bills are getting paid and they're sa they are saving enough for retirement. If you're in that boat, you know you're saving enough and you have your fixed expenses, you do not need to have categories. You don't. If you want them, great. Have as many categories as you want, but you don't necessarily, like the, the, having categories does not mean you're going to have a successful budget. Um, the categories do not mean that you're doing something right or wrong. And so there is no, when I'm going to give you these, the structure of setting up categories, there is no right and wrong. You can do what the way you want to. I'm just going to show you how I have found success in the past. Really common category structures that people go through are the 50, 30, 20 budget. If you've heard of this, awesome. If not, it's 50% of your necessities. So like your rent, utilities, and all that stuff. 30% of your budget goes towards wants, uh, so fun stuff. And 20% of it goes to savings. Um, this is a great structure. However, I feel like there is a lot of discrepancy between what is a necessity and what is a want. 
Um, it can get very jumbles and you can really justify anything into necessities if you really want to. And so I don't really love using this with clients. I don't really track necessities and wants unless it's like, unless I do need to show them an example of like, hey, let's really dive in to figure out what is a necessity and want for you. Like that is a really great value exercise. If you haven't done that for yourself, go, go ahead and give it a shot. But I find this one a little bit difficult to work with. So don't often do it, but it's a really great structure. If you can work off this, awesome. Like, I mean, if I can get people to be saving 20% for retirement, that is absolutely the goal. That is the, the key number one goal I have for budgets at the end of the day. Everything else is can be flexible depending on the person, their lifestyle, and their values. Um, but this is a necessity for everyone. So um, budgeting by paycheck. You can also have your uh, category set up to be, you know, for paycheck one versus paycheck two. Uh, so that way, you know, you have money in your paychecks when they come in uh, for those bills. I also don't really love this strategy. It is great temporarily and I get my clients on it for a short period of time. But the goal is to get so far away from this because you have an emergency fund because that emergency fund will allow you to not worry about when your paycheck comes in versus when a bill goes out. That is so much headache and so much stress. And I want to get you away from that as, so, as soon as possible. Um, I do not want you to be stressing about when a bill is going to come through and if you have the money in your in your checking account. That is so not where we want your headspace to be. And so we need to work really, really hard to get you in an emergency fund so you can move away from budgeting this way. So this is a general structure that I use with most of my clients. So we have your fixed expenses. These are things that are just going to come out no matter what. They are recurring, they're regular, they are going to come out. Um, then we have the variable, flexible, behavior, slash choice driven. Those are all a bunch of words for the exact same thing. It is things that you have to actively pull out your car to pay for. Um, they are things that are driven by your choices, by your behaviors, by your habits. Um, these are the things that I want you to be focusing on a budgeting app. I don't really care. I mean, we of course want to make sure your bills go out on time and that's a great thing, but I don't want this stuff to be mixed in with this. Otherwise, it's so hard to see the things that you actually have choices about, the things you have control over. Um, in a day-to-day, -day, the things that you can uh, gamify in your budget to make work. Then you have your yearly expenses. So these are the things that we talked about in the sinking fund video, which I highly recommend watching to set this up for you. Um, these are things that come out right, uh, occasionally during the year, but that you want to be saving for monthly so that you make sure you have enough room in your budget that you can spend in the yearly categories. Then you have your savings, your short-term savings like vacation travel, buying a car, buying a home, and then your long-term savings like retirement. So as you can see, when you get set up in Monarch, you're going to have these sections uh, already populated, gifts, auto transport, housing, bills, utilities. These are things that are already there. If you like this, great. Keep doing this. I love this too. The way that's set up is totally fine. But if you want to go with the way that I'm talking about with the fixed, flexible uh, yearly savings and the uh, other savings or short-term, long-term savings, uh, I'm going to show you exactly how you're going to do that in Monarch. So this is a little bit of a tutorial. If you've already messed with your categories, this might be a little bit of an overkill for you, but we're going to get started. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to click one of these to become my bills uh, and bills category, all the fixed expenses. So I'm going to edit this. I'm going to name this bills and fixed expenses, or you can really name it whatever you want. And then I'm going to have all these fixed expenses right here already. I'm going to start dragging up everything else that is a fixed expense. Now you can do this in a couple different ways to categorize and reorganize this stuff. You can do it by grouping. So like I want all my home stuff and then maybe subscriptions, and then auto. You could also organize it by paycheck like we were talking about just to help clear things up, maybe organize it a little bit. So like if the auto payment comes on the first, put it here. If your garbage comes out on the 30th, put it here. That's one way to do it. I like to just keep everything grouped, like kind of just in next next to each other in similar categories. Um, so the mortgage, of course, is going to go up here as well. I'm going to put that right up top because that is the most important. Um, anything else that I'm seeing that needs to be in here? Let's say no for now. And then I'm also going to create a category for subscriptions. And I'm going to spell that correctly. And I'm going to put a little you know calendar icon, I think, for this one right here. Ah, perfect. And then we are going to, um, then the next thing we're going to do is I am going to add a new group, create a group, and I'm going to make this the yearly savings or savings categories. These are the ones that are going to come out, not regularly, um, but throughout the year that you need to be saving for. 
Um, and so this is stuff like, uh, I'm going to grab travel right there. We're not traveling every single month, so that's going to be in a savings category. Um, the other things that will go in that category are uh, gifts and special occasions. That's another one that's going to go in here. We're going to do gifts, a little icon there. Um, and then things like uh, auto maintenance, home improvement. Those are all things that are just going to go. We're going to scroll all the way down here, kind of drag and drop, put it in those savings categories. Uh, let's see here. Where's that auto maintenance? Right there. I'm going to grab that, drag and drop all the way down to your savings categories. Now I'm going to get rid of the categories that I don't really care for. So for like gifts and donations, I don't really need a subcategory for that. I don't need to track gifts and donations separately. So I'm going to just delete it. Now the two categories that are in there, maybe I want to keep, but I'm going to move those to my lifestyle expenses now. Um, that way I can get rid of that. And then this, I actually have a debate going on whether gas goes into fixed expense because it's something that like normally is fairly regular. If you're driving, you know, fairly consistently, it's normally around the same dollar amount. There's not really a lot of behavior driven here. You kind of just need gas, right? And it's going to be about the same every month. So I like to put it here, but you can put it in lifestyle. It's totally up to you. These three categories, I generally, if you, unless you're using public transit and taxis because, you know, you're in a, um, a city that allows you to do that, um, keep those, keep those in lifestyle costs or wherever you want to put those. Um, but for a majority of my clients, they have a car, they're not using this very often. If you need parking, it's normally because you went uh, downtown to a restaurant, right? Or it's because it is related to travel and vacation. So I actually just get rid of these. And when you have these types of expenses, I put it in towards like entertainment. When I went out to see a show and I had to pay for parking or I, uh, you know, travel that I had to get an Uber, um, that's what would be a travel expense for me. So I just go ahead and get rid of these. When you deactivate something like this, it's just going to disable the categories, the main ones that Monarch has, it'll just disable them. Um, and then sometimes there will be transactions in there. So when there are transactions in there, it's going to trigger you to reassign. Now I know taxi and rideshare for me is always related to vacation. I'm never getting a taxi around here, or maybe it's like due to automatons or something, but generally it's travel and vacation. So I'm just going to put all of them right there and disable this category. You can't delete something if you can't delete a category if there are still transactions that are labeled as taxi or rideshare. Otherwise, it wouldn't really make sense for Monarch to have that, right? Um, and so that's just the way you have to do it. Um, and if you need to put it, if you don't know what these are, you can click on this and I'll show you all those transactions and you can manually recategorize each one. Um, or you can just throw them in miscellaneous. If you're like, I don't care. I just want to get rid of this category and I don't know what those were. That's fine too. You can do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and disable those deactivate, disable, and then you'll see all of these are disabled. I'm going to go in here and edit and delete this. Notice that they're disabled, but they're still inside there. So I just go ahead and move that to other. Um, you're, they're not going to show up in your budget. You're not going to see them when you're scrolling through trying to categorize something. So it is moved. It's just they, they just can't really fully delete the ones that are like in Monarch originally. So we got rid of that. We're going to get rid of housing as well. I'm going to disable rent because I'm paying a mortgage. So we're just going to deactivate that one. Um, and then I'm going to get rid of this one, like I said before, we're going to move rent over to other. Sorry, I'm going kind of quickly here, but you can pause and rewatch. Now I am going to rename this one to just lifestyle because I have my travel stuff in the other uh, savings categories. Okay, so here's where things get, so now we have all of our fixed expenses. We have our, I like to keep food and dining in its own category. And like I said, you can get rid of this coffee shops one. You can add so delicious gas station food or whatever you want. But remember, the more categories you have, the, the more complicated things need to be. If you really don't care about what you spend on coffee shops, just label all as restaurants or dining out. It's all kind of the same process. Um, go ahead and do that. Uh, but you want to be very deliberate. You do not want too many categories because the more categories you have, the more things you have to manually go in and sort through in your transactions. And it means that your budget is less sustainable, meaning that if you miss a month, things get busy, life happens, things get wild, then you have to go through and sort so many transactions and it's not really going to be totally accurate. So I'd rather you go with less so that you're, uh, you can set up rules that make sense, that things can get automatic, automatically categorized. And you don't have to worry too much. Um, I generally get rid of fun money because I think that's the same thing as entertainment. So I normally get rid of this category right here. Um, so I keep lifestyle, I keep shopping, um, I keep children, I normally get rid of this one, I put student loans up with the bills. So I'll just because if you're paying on your student loans, this is a regular fixed expense. So I'll just put that up here. 
Um, same with anything in the financials. If you're paying ta your property taxes regularly, um, or if this is if this is something you're paying, like if you're paying your property taxes every few months, you want to put that in your savings category, right? And so you're going to put that into savings because you're going to build savings for that one. Um, and just going down the list here. Okay. Sometimes medical is also a savings category. You can move that down. You can put fitness. If you're paying a regularly regular regular subscription, you can move that back up to bills. Kind of up to you. Financial, you can keep there. I would keep other two because this miscellaneous category is actually necessary. You never want to put stuff in there unless you absolutely have to. Um, and then business, I'd get rid of all these if you don't have a business or if you're not tracking your business expenses, just deactivate all of those. So now when you come into your budget, you're going to have your fixed expenses and you can even collapse this because these are the things you don't really need to pay attention for. You do want to make sure your bills are getting paid though. So if you can, you know, uncollapse it to make sure that, hey, my mortgage came out, okay? Now, here's where you want to be focusing on are the things you have choices around. These are the things where you can manipulate. Hey, I spent too much on groceries. Can I pull it from this budget? I didn't spend anything on shopping, so I'm going to move that over to my groceries, right? You can play with this. You can gamify this. You can strategize throughout the month. You only want to be focusing on the things that you do control here. Um, if you, and then f the, finally, you also have these savings categories and you're going to set all of these to roll over so that they can build. Um, we're going to turn on that rollover and it's going to put that little arrow right here. And so that it, um, as you don't spend those dollars, they will continue to build and they build up in savings. And then your other goals, as I will show in another video, setting up your goals, but you can put in your long-term goals, like saving for a home and all that stuff. Things that you do not need um, categories for are one-time expenses. If you are moving, do not create a category for moving. What you can do is put it as miscellaneous and you can tag it. And I highly suggest just using those tags when you want to track stuff like that. I recently had a wedding, so all of my wedding expenses went to miscellaneous. I'm not going to create a category called wedding because I hope I never have to get married again. So I'm going to tag them and I'm going to create a tag that's wedding or moving expenses or um, you know, if you went on vacation, maybe cruise of to Mexico in 2023, you know, you can, ca you can tag all of those one-time vacations, but you do not need categories for those. And again, going back to what we talked about before, if your category is not doing one of these four things, you do not and should not make a category for it. I see clients make categories for like a subscription that they only plan to have for three months. But then once you're done with that subscription, you'll never need it again. Just create a category for subscriptions, but all subscriptions under the one same category. Uh, and you can mark and uh, pay attention to your total amount of subscriptions. You have normally one for annual subscriptions, and you can put that in a savings category, just like this right here. And then you'll have your regular monthly subscriptions just right here. Um, Another idea for categories, um, subcategories that you can create is also based on couples. So if you uh, um, are have your own spending money, you can either create a category of calls like partner one, spending money, partner two, spending money. Um, but if you want to be budgeting, you, like how you both are spending your money, like, for example, I, I don't really care about where, you know, I have like a set amount where I'll spend on whatever I want and I don't really care where it goes. Um, but, you know, my partner might want to see, oh, how much am I spending on gifts or games or something else that's important to them? We are going to put, you know, I put his categories uh, and put his, you know, I put like partner one. Um, yeah, partner one expenses. There we go. Okay, we'll just put that right there. And then we can create its own category here. And so we can track whatever you want. And again, that's not really necessary if you want to just put uh, right here in lifestyle, like, um, you know, Taylor's expenses versus Neil's expenses or whatever it is for you. Um, these are the things that you would do in lifestyle right there. So that is part of the budgeting. And again, we really just want you to be creating categories where you can focus on making changes, making sustainable lifestyle changes that will help you pay off your debt, save more money, uh, and hit your spending goals. So I hope that helps. Please let me know if you have any questions or if you have any other ideas that you want to run by as far as like, hey, what if I categorize like this? Like, I'd love to give you some feedback on if I've seen that work or not. Um, it's, it's, um, and then if you also, if you're just like wanting to do a deep dive on, uh, you know, more diff different ways to categorize, I can absolutely do that. Just let me know and we can create more videos on the categorization. So thank you so much. I hope you get a lot out of that video and please subscribe for more videos on all things budgeting.